This idea of watching the game is a key feature of our care and growth leadership approach. Um, it is rooted in this idea that the leader's job is not to achieve a result through people, but his job is to achieve people through results. And we use this coaching metaphor to make sense of that. A coach doesn't use the player as his means to get a job done and achieve a result. He actually uses the result as his means to enable the player. Now, if the coach is going to do that, he, the coach cannot do that job of enabling the player if the coach doesn't watch what's happening on the field. You can't coach a game you're not watching. So what does that mean practically? In the first instance, you need to be sensitive to the difference between what people are getting and what people are giving. And you need to understand that, that anything that relates to an outcome or a result is really concerned with what people get. And the contribution or what people give is really, is really where the game gets played. Um, so you can imagine then that the effect, the result is what's on the scoreboard and what, uh, what the player actually gives or does is their contribution. That's what's happening on the field. Um, so if you're going to be coaching somebody, what you want to give, that, uh, give attention to is where the game is being played. That's what you need to be watching. Now, what this means in terms of Eisenhower's uh, time management model, I mean, this thing is variously described as either the Eisenhower time management model or the COVID time management model, is that if you consider all the things you could conceivably spend time on, you can plot them on the basis of two axes. You can first of all give time to things that are important, or you can give attention and time to things that aren't important. And you can then further give attention to things that are urgent, and then you can give attention to things that aren't urgent. Now, in most leaders in organizations spend their time in this first quadrant, which is really all concerned with deadline-driven activities and result-focused activities. In fact, spending time in these uh, activities is considered to be virtuous in most organizations. Having a results focused is considered to be virtuous in most organizations. Um, so this is really where most leaders actually spend their time and give attention to. The next uh, quadrant which the model describes is what we would call quadrant three activities. And these are activities that are urgent but not important. So that they, you know, deals with things like interruptions or telephone calls, things that make an urgent demand to your attention but aren't particularly important in their own right. The next quadrant um, would be described as quadrant four, time wasters. These are, uh, you know, computer games, anything that you do to kind of pass the time. So then there's clearly a quadrant left. Um, quad we would call these quadrant two activities. Uh, and these are quadrant, these are activities that are really concerned with building process rather than focusing on outcome. Covey's got a very nice way of exploring or explaining uh, the nature of these activities. He does it by way of metaphor. He calls them sharpening the saw activities. So he says, imagine you're walking through a forest and you come across a woodcutter who's trying to cut down a tree with a really blunt saw and he's not succeeding. And uh, you go up to the woodcutter cutter, and you say to him, you know, please just stop for a moment and sharpen the saw. And in great irritation, the person rounds on you and says, look, can't you see I'm busy? In other words, he's so busy on pursuing the result uh, uh, the outcome that he's trying to achieve, that he doesn't give any attention to the sharpening of the saw to his own process. These quadrant two activities are by definition activities where you give attention to process. These are also deeply empowering activities because they're clearly things that sit in your own hands. And in a sense, what we're trying to do is if we're saying you're watching the game, this is what you should be watching. This is where you should be, what you should be giving attention to. You're giving, you should be giving attention to the unique contribution which people are doing. And in leadership positions, this would be the care and growth of subordinates. This is giving attention to process over outcome. Now, what that means in terms of how one's attention works, um, at the furthest limit, you can speak about a final result. And the question is, is the final result the uh, any person uh, process or is it their outcome? And obviously, it is not their process. It is the player's outcome. You say, well, what does that mean in terms of balanced scorecard results? Because very often people think balance, focusing attention on balanced scorecards, that's useful. But actually, these are still outcomes. This is not process. 
Um, what about shorter term kind of uh, uh, measures like 90 day deliverables and things like that? They are still outcomes. They aren't process. The process from the point of view of this approach says what you need to be giving attention to is, this, is the person's performance against the standard of what's required of them in the activity that they're doing. So that is the game that you're trying to watch. That's the game the leader's trying to watch. So what that means in terms of an organization, let's assume that we're looking at the role played by a worker and a, uh, a supervisor. So um, we're going to call the supervisor the overseer. Clearly, the worker's results, his scoreboard would be kind of what he gets out of doing his job. His own contribution would be the tasks that he does. That's the game he's playing in order to achieve those results. Now, if the overseer were to be watching the worker's game, he couldn't be making a convincing call as to whether the worker's actually doing what's required of him by only looking at the scoreboard. He'd actually have to give attention to the, the worker's tasks. In other words, the, the, the athlete's playing of the game, what's happening on the field. This is still clear when you're dealing with somebody whose job it is to uh, do a job and, uh, a, and a person who has an overseeing job with regard to the person who's doing the job. But what if we're looking at the overseer themselves? So let's assume the overseer reports to a boss and clearly the overseer also has a set of results, but the overseer's own contribution, what sits in his, in his hands, in other words, the overseer's game is to do certain tasks to standard and to give their subordinate the means, the ability to care for their subordinate, to give the subordinate the means, the ability and the accountability to do what's required of them. So if the boss were to be watching the overseer's game, what the boss would be trying to get a sort of insight into is whether the overseer is doing those things. And similarly, when we're dealing with the boss, you know, clearly the boss also produces a result her contribution to producing that result is to do some tasks herself and to care for the overseer, to give the overseer the means, the ability and the accountability to do what's required of him. If the boss's boss were to be watching her game, then the boss, boss's boss would be putting attention into finding out whether the boss is doing those things appropriately. Tasks, care, means ability and accountability to her immediate subordinates. So. How would the boss do that? Um, the first problem is how does the boss deal with this issue of window dressing? Because the problem in most organizations is that the more senior a leader is, the more subordinates down the line will seek to leave a good impression of the boss. It's very difficult in a corporate context for a boss just to drop into a meeting under the assumption that people won't notice that they're there. That's just naive. In other words, the very fact that the boss is there affects how the game gets played. So how does the boss understand or get insight into how the game is being played? He needs to be clear what would be visible on the floor, the footprints of the game being done well, if people are executing their, their task well. So if you're in a manufacturing com uh, organization, if he walked the floor, how would he know that, th that th people are doing what's required of them to standard here? Similar in any uh, example, a mining example would be the same thing. If he walked into a workplace, what would be visible in the workplace? If it was a banking example, what would be visible? What would he see that he has easy access to if he knew that people were doing what they were doing well and with a sense of commitment? The coach also needs to be sensitive to the degree to which peers at any level are supportive of each other. So when the coach watches the game, what he should not just be looking at are the footprints on the floor, but evidence for how people are actually interacting on an ongoing basis. And also how people are, are being dealt with by their own leaders. So, um, you know, does the leader give the means, ability and accountability to the, the people who are doing the job? And then finally, the leader needs to do a leadership diagnostic on exceptions when they are observed. Because um, if, if the leader only deals with the exception, the thing that they see wrong on the floor, then generally what they would do is institute a control measure. Their um, remediation of the problem won't be empowering. It'll probably be disabling. What the leader needs to do is work out what sits at every level between themselves and 
and the exception to work out what they should be doing with their immediate subordinate. Um, so how would you then be watching the game? The first thing you need to do is you need to be clear about the standard of whatever you're going to observe. So before you go into the workplace, you know, say what, what, what are the themes you'd like to pursue now? So if it's a, uh, a sales environment, what would you see on the floor if your customers were happy? If it's a manufacturing environment, what would you see uh, for, in terms of um, housekeeping if this place was being well run? Be clear about the standard of what you're going to observe before you go. Decide on the focus, uh, for example, safety, costs or quality. Um, be clear of what you would see on the operation if the standard was met. And then once you've done that, see things as they are before you go in. And what, what I mean by this, to clear your head of any clutter before you actually go into the workplace to go and observe the game. Try as much as possible to suspend your presumptions about what uh, you're likely to see. You can do a paper trash exercise before you go, and that basically means uh, you write down anything that is anything that currently concerns you or worries you on a piece of paper. Uh, you write each worry on an individual piece of paper. Once you've got them all, you crumple up the papers and you throw them into uh, a waste paper basket. You can uh, quieten your own internal dialogue by using one of the meditative techniques that we've explored in the person excellence uh, content. Um, once you've done that, you go to where the things are happening. You go to their area and don't let ask them to come to yours. You know, very often people think that coaching is just something that happens in the uh, boss's office and is really concerned with the conversation between the boss and the subordinate. That's not where most of coaching happens. Most of coach, most of what happens under the rubric of coaching is really hap should happen where the person's game is being played. In other words, you've got to get into your subordinates area and get first-hand understanding of what's happening. Otherwise, you can't do this coaching job. Um, also, when you listen, listen actively. Listen actively with curiosity and not with judgment. Try not to be prejudiced when you go in. Um, ask why. Seek to understand and not to apportion blame. And write down what you observe. Um, that's very important because very often within a couple of days, you've kind of forgotten the core of what you've, you've noticed, or you certainly have you've forgotten the detail of what you notice. And there's very often that detail, which is actually useful in a subsequent coaching conversation with the subordinate. If your coach is a leader, then what, what, at whatever level they're at, once you've ex understood an exception on a floor, you have to do a leadership diagnostic on whatever you observed that is either spectacularly below standard or spectacularly above standard. And then finally, ask yourself, what is what you're seeing telling you about your coach's ability as a, uh, rather than their accountability? Do understand that fundamentally watching the game is a subset of the whole coaching process. And you coach with the intent to cultivate ability. So you always, the first port of call when you're looking at exceptions, you're not trying to apportion blame or accountability. You're trying to understand competency or ability issues. So that's the first port of call. And only once you've, you've had to dismiss ability as a problem, if, if you're dealing with something that is below standard, would you then consider whether this is an accountability issue at all.